Okay, so what I thought we might do is start looking at atoms and how they can change and turn into ions. Now we should remember from atoms, they have no overall charge. Got me out. Because obviously the number of protons they contain and the number of electrons they contain is the same. Now to change an atom into an ion, the atom needs to lose or gain electrons. Remember we talked about that electrons have negligible mass and they're the things that can be moved to one another kind of atom to another, changing them then into ions. So if we take lithium for example, lithium in the periodic table has seven protons and neutrons in its nucleus and three of them are protons. So because we know as atoms have no overall charge, that tells me that it must have three electrons. Now from our rules of how to draw electron arrangement, I know two are in the first shell and one is in the second. So if I write my little notation, just to make sure I'm kind of modeling the best example. To change this into an ion, it's much easier for this lithium atom to lose this electron than it is to try and fill that shell to its maximum. So it's kind of pulling in another seven electrons. The electrostatic attraction from this lithium atom isn't strong enough to pull those seven electrons in. But actually this one could be moving to somewhere else. So to draw this as an ion, we have one full shell. And to show that it's an ion, we must add these square brackets. Okay, and our notation has changed. Now because it's lost an electron, it now has charge. So it's either positive or negative. So if we imagine this example has three protons, we know it's got three electrons. So it's positive charge, there isn't any. Okay, positives equal negatives as no overall charge, just as we've got written here. The ion though has lost an electron, hasn't it? It's lost an electron to become this ion. So the number of protons it has is exactly the same. That does not change. We now, though, have only two electrons. So if we look, we've got one extra positive charge, meaning overall this ion now is positive. And it's a positive one charge. Okay, because now it only has one shell because it's lost that electron to become more stable. They all want to be like the noble gases. They'll never be the same as them, but they want to be similar. Okay, because they've got a nice full shell, makes them a little bit stable. If we look at another example, let's say of oxygen. Now oxygen has two and six, and it has eight electrons. So we do our notation as well. Will this atom, to change into an ion, gain two or be able to get rid of those six? It's much easier for this atom to change into ion to gain two electrons meaning when it's gained those two so we'll write that there gained two electrons its structure now has changed we now have a full shell on our oh, on our outer electron shell our square brackets to show that it's now become an ion and now we need to work out its charge. But here we had eight protons and eight electrons. On this side, we still have our eight protons, remember, because they're not going to change, but we've gained two more electrons. Meaning our charges now, we've got two more negatives than we have positives. So this becomes a two negative charge ion. Okay, now this process, you need to practice Okay, because in your exam, they will ask you and assume knowledge that you know what the elements or these atoms are going to do to change into an ion. Okay, so if you think that periodic table, those numbers at the top, they tell you many of them, those group numbers, will let you know how many electrons they need to either lose or gain to become an electron or to become an ion. 